Hello, we are Gunther de Win and Donald Fagene from the University Hospital in Antwerp, Belgium. We briefly discuss the main findings of our article, the testicular asymmetry index in healthy adolescent boys. It's a fact that for many boys with inguinoscrotal pathology and especially varicocheals, we often rely on a testicular atrophy index of more than 20% to decide that a boy with a varicocheal needs treatment. However, little is known about this testicular asymmetry in healthy adolescent boys. And for this reason, the aim of our study was to assess the presence of testicular asymmetry and the threshold uh, values used in varicocele treatment in a healthy population. For this, we carried out an observational cross-sectional study in which we recruited more than 500 adolescent boys during checkups in secondary schools and at the third tier hospital. Boys with a current or past inguinoscrotal disorder possibly influencing testicular growth were excluded. Tanner stage was determined and ultrasonography was performed to measure testicular dimensions. Using the formula of Lambert, testicular volume was calculated where after testicular volume difference and testicular atrophy index could be calculated as well. As shown, testicular asymmetry appears to be a normal phenomenon in healthy adolescent boys, especially in tenor stage 3. This implies that when only relying on one measurement of a testicular volume differential for designing open treatment for, for instance, a unilateral varicocheal, that probably overtreatment will occur because we see this in a healthy population as well. And this can be clearly seen in one of the figures shown and in table 4. When a boy with a varicocheal is seen, we advise to perform several measurements when evaluating testicular volume. Because large differences in testicular volume are sometimes seen, but as other studies have shown, often this is a transient phenomenon in a varicocheal population. At the other hand, we also see that this can be a transient phenomenon in a healthy population. Lastly, we present practical box plots that show left, right and total testicular volume in relation to tenor stage for genital development, tenor stage for pubic hair and age group. These box plots can be found in figure 2. They provide an important reference for the clinician in the assessment of the measured testicular volume in adolescents. For using these box plots, we recommend to firstly assess the corresponding tenor stage for the age of the adolescent, which can be done with the aid of table 1, in which the mean age for each tenor stage is noted. Consequently, the clinician can estimate how the adolescent's left, right and total testicular volume relate to the values measured in a healthy population. Moreover, this relation can be followed up over time by repeating the aforementioned steps for each of the measurements. The problem statement, the methodology, the results and an extensive discussion of our results can be read in more detail in our article. We wish you a lot of reading pleasure.